Yes, sir. Present case Z66, 825 Mars Hill, LLC. Request rezoning from R30 to R20 OSC for the purpose of a single family subdivision in land lots 264 and 269 of the 20th District. The property is located on the north and south sides of Hathaway Road, on the west side of Mars Hill mm -hmm. Road, on the easterly side of D West Road, on the east side of Carter Road, and on the southeasterly side of Brown Store Road. The applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to rezone case Z66? Please keep your hands up. Let the record show there are seven people here in opposition. All those wishing to address the board, please come forward to be I'm sworn Kevin in. Moore. I'm here on behalf of the applicant and owner, which is 825 Mars Hill LLC in this application for rezoning. Uh, this property is just over 35 acres. Uh, it's located at the intersection of several roads, uh, but primarily the intersection of Hathaway, Due West Roads, and Mars Hill Road in West Cobb County. Uh, the application seeks rezoning from its existing category of R30 uh, to R20 OSC, or Open Space Community, uh, which we think will be uh, very valuable and beneficial not only for the development of this property in a manner uh, in which it can provide uh, both benefits to the residents that will hopefully live here, uh, but benefits to the surrounding area in terms of what it can provide uh, in terms of development techniques uh, and preservation of meaningful open space uh, that provides for uh, what we think are visual enhancements, which are really visual preservation uh, of this particular area. And as you can see from the overhead that's now on your screen, uh, the property is not wooded. Uh, this property was, a, was really a working farm for many, many years. Um, uh, the family that owned a large part of the property in this area, the Brown family, uh, ran this farm uh, and ran it as a farm for many years until just recently when they sold it. Uh, the first thing I want to show you uh, is uh, a, a site plan uh, that was developed uh, as a R20 plan. Uh, this R20 plan demonstrates how regular R20, and it could be R30 development, it would just simply be less lots. This is a total of 58 lots. Uh, that, is, that would be, uh, could be developed under this property uh, that meets all the R20 standards. Uh, as you know, but some others may not, when you develop under uh, straight R20 or straight R30 type standards, uh, lots can be in wetlands, lot, lots can uh, be in stream buffers, uh, you can fill in farm ponds, and you can do those types of things to create the lot space. Um, under R20 or R30. It's just a matter of the number of lots that you would have. Uh, but you end up with a very straightforward uh, vanilla arrangement that does not take advantage of what could be preserved and what could be done uh, with this property. And with that, I want to show you now what our open space plan looks like. And he's going to turn that to the board and I'll step, step over there so I can highlight uh, what we think are some of the advantages and many advantages uh, to uh, this plan. So let me orient you uh, now with, uh, with this proposed OSC, or Open Space Community Plan. Uh, this is Hathaway Road and its intersection with Mars Hill here. Uh, this is the intersection with Due West Road here and with Carter Road down here. So you can see this property does have um, a plenty of, of uh, road frontage. Uh, what's proposed here is a total of 55 lots. Uh, from a density standpoint or a net density standpoint, that's 1.65 units per acre. But what you will see is, and we'll go into further detail in a minute with that, is a preservation of open space, meaning preservation of this existing pond so it creates a water feature, so it creates a benefit uh, to the community in terms of value and in terms of marketability, uh, as well as preservation of this uh, portion of the track that stretches along Mars Hill Road. Again, by preservation of open space, that means it's undisturbed open space except for installation of uh, passive uh, walking trails, which means that are in keeping with the woods or with uh, the ground that is there uh, along this area to connect in. In addition, we have uh, a large amount of open space on the other side of Hathaway Road. This is open space that is created at the intersection of Due West and Hathaway Road, as well as stretches back through the middle of this tract uh, where you have a protection of a very, very small stream, but protection of uh, some existing wetlands here as it feeds in and goes downstream on Mars Hill. And you also have open space that's going to be protected there at the intersection of Mars Hill and Hathaway Road as well. Uh, what, what that is doing, though, is preserving what we think is a visual 
uh, aesthetic that's beneficial to this area. Uh, if you drive Mars Hill and Hadaway and due west roads, what you will drive and see today is large areas of, of open space here, large areas of, of undisturbed open space along Mars Hill. Those will still be the case once this would be developed under this plan. So that visual preservation is available. In addition, what we have added to this and agreed to as part of our stipulation letter is extensive buffering. Along Due West Road in this area here, as an existing stand of trees, almost planted, beautiful trees that are right along the right of way there. It incorporates also a split rail fence that comes along this area here. Uh, by use, utilizing OSC techniques, we're able to preserve those trees and those will remain. Uh, we're able to save that stand of trees, which is beautiful and which really marks this area uh, as well as that fencing. Uh, we're able to do that by placing these lots here, which face out onto Due West Road, which is also similar in nature to some of the other homes that are along this area. And we're able just to have a single driveway access point that comes around and then comes out behind the trees. And that way those trees are preserved as well as the fencing so you have uh, that uh, visual preservation again. And then also what we're doing is implementing a minimum 20-foot landscape buffer on the road frontages. Like I said, this property has significant road frontages, and so we have an extensive landscape plan that goes around the perimeter along these many road frontages, which will have heavy planning in keeping with uh, that same style uh, with split rail fencing as well, as well as uh, additional landscaping buffer and pres preserve landscape perimeter buffer uh, in this uh, rear corner. Now what I'd like to do is go into the detail of those buffers because I think it's important and certainly important to the visual pres preservation of this track. Uh, the first board is taken as a photo, and you can even see the zoning signs. Uh, and that's the trees I'm speaking of, for, for those that may not be familiar. Uh, those are the trees that are along Due West Road that will be preserved, and you can see the split rail fence here. And you can see, it's very difficult to see, but we even superimpose on the background. You can do that with digital photography where houses would be. So you can see that the houses would be set back behind these trees so that what people see today, they'll see tomorrow upon development uh, by utilizing those creative techniques these trees and this buffer stays along Due West Road. Uh, the next, while it looks similar, it's actually different. What we did was canvas West Cobb to say, okay, what, what do buffers along West Cobb Roads look like? And how is that presented and how has that been done uh, so that those who drive in West Cobb uh, and have a feel that they talk about, and that includes many of us that are here, uh, will recognize that. This is the uh, the roadside buffer that we were speaking of, the road frontage buffer that would be planted. This is one that we found and this is one that we would be emulating uh, for our purposes and that's set out uh, in our stipulation letter with a specific landscape plan with uh, the numbers of plant materials and trees. And this is what that buffer would look like once it was planted. It incorporates a split rail fence, also incorporates um, some berming where appropriate so that you have extensive buffering along the road frontages. That not only helps the surrounding community and residents, it also helps those that will be living there. As I said, many of these homes, by nature of this property having so much road frontage, uh, will have uh, homes that, are road, that will have road frontage, protects them as well, those future residents, and adds value to their homes as well as value to the surrounding area. also wanted to show you another visual representation of what uh, open space looks like. If you drop out uh, what would be developed in this property and then simply drop in what's going to be preserved, you can now see with this, with these roads, Hadaway, Mars Hill, and Due West, how from a uh, over the you know, up top bird's eye view of what's being preserved with this proposed OSC plan, including this pond, this area along Mars Hill, so that this area really stays exactly the same as it is today, so that this area stays the same as it is today. And that really provides, again, visual pre preservation for the community, but also provides a visual amenity of open space for those new residents. Lastly, it's a little bit smaller board, if you can, thank you, can you get that? It'll be easier if I put it up there. In terms of density, uh, what we're proposing is 1.65 units per acre of 55 lots. This area is dominated by several categories. There's lots of undeveloped R30 that's larger, um, uh, that's not developed as R30, 
but it's just simply acreage tracts that are still zoned R30, like the subject property, which is right here. This is Mars Hill Road and Hathaway Road. Uh, what what you have, though, in the area, what's been developed has been largely developed as R20, as a predecessor to open space communities, that is conservation subdivision or plan development, such as Brookstone, as well as uh, RA5 development, which is right here adjacent to us on Mars Hill. Those surrounding densities are 1.75, 2 units per acre, 1.74 units per acre, 1.75 units per acre, even 2.89 units per acre in the RA5 section. What we're proposing is 1.65 is less than an R20 density, uh, much more in keeping, we think, with recognizing the uh, R30 nature of some of the surrounding area, but also recognizing that the area has been developed as an R20 type density, not as an R30 density. With that, we have a stipulation letter dated July 29th that incorporates all of what I just reviewed with you in terms of the stipulations and the commitments to those detailed landscape buffers. Uh, we think this is an excellent OSC plan, and we think it's a great plan for this particular property, uh, and we would respectfully request your recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Kevin went over by just about 30 seconds, so we'll add that additional time to the opposition uh, to let them take advantage of that. So let's hear from the opposition at this time. Who wants to be first? Somebody come on up. There you go. I'm going to be short because uh, I know other people want to talk. Uh, I live in uh, Browns. Give Farm. us your name, please. I'm sorry. Michael Mays, Kirk Mays. Thank you, Michael. Um, I live across just the uh, street from the subdivision in Browns Farm. Um, uh, what I think uh, is proposed is, is not in keeping with what is uh, – currently um, the different communities that are there. We have, uh, right now, we have, um, during the school time, you cannot get out of Brown's Farm easily. So we're going to be adding in some other houses that, uh, as was shown, uh, are coming out on due west, and that's going to make that just a mess. The other thing that I'm concerned about is there's going to be a, the way that the plot is proposed, there's going to be very little separation between um, Mars Hill and where these people are coming out. So you're going to have back-to-back um, -back people coming out onto uh, Hathaway. And I think that's also going to be a ma nightmare. Um, um, let's see. Uh, um, I guess the other thing, the real comment that I would have is uh, the report says that there's 14,700 vehicles on due west, and currently uh, that road is having uh, trouble supporting the traffic. And I'm just um, concerned with us trying to get out of our subdivision and with the, um, the traffic that's caused. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Next speaker, please. Thank you. I'm Dennis Krusak. I live in Brookstone 2 subdivision. And I guess the point I would like to make is I don't believe this meets the intent of the open space community. Um, in a previous case, there was obviously old growth habitat to protect in streams. We're looking at an old farm pasture. The area that they're talking about protecting um, the narrow strip along, yeah, that narrow strip is a kudzu patch. Um, so it's really not open space. It's just going to be a kudzu patch that continues to spread. The other large chunk of open space is designated on the plat as their stormwater management. So obviously they can't build there. It's going to be open anyway. You have to manage the stormwater. Um, and I'm not quite sure why they're coming at R20. If you look at the numbers, 72% um, of those lots are less than 15,000 square feet. 9% are less than 10,000 square feet. Um, I know you can have any size lot in an open space community. It's just it almost looks like we're playing games. It's an R20 when it doesn't even come close to an R15. Um, and I think that there's really nothing unique there to protect um, with an open space community designation. There's nothing, no natural resources there. There's nothing historical, nothing cultural. So it appears it's just a way to minimize lot size to maximize housing. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Next speaker, please. 
If any of you folks want to come up and just stand so you can move quickly to the podium, that'll be fine. You can do that. Good morning. My name is Dave Browns from Browns Farm. Um, one of the bigger concerns that we have is we keep flip-flopping from R30 to R20. The other concern with Browns Farm is when you look at Due West Road, and you look at the accident history right on the road, right across from where Hathaway interse intersects with it, we're going to put an exit of, I believe it was 12 homes on the newest plot. I've seen several of them now, but the newest plot would be anywhere from 7 to 12 homes. There's going to be one little road and an access point that comes out. One of the questions that we have is, assuming this goes through, if those homes have children and stuff, will the school buses actually stop on Due West Road or will they pull into the little drive that they're recommending, the garbage disposal and so forth? To give you an example, today to come out on Due West from Brown's Farm at uh, 7.30 would have taken you about 22 minutes to get out on the road. It backs up almost all the way to the Red Rock entrance. So if they're wanting to do this, we would like to ask the county what they're going to do about the road situation and, come, and so forth. Then as we show, we've got an exit that comes on to Hathaway that's also extremely close to Due West, which is going to uh, route traffic that direction. What we didn't see was any kind of proposal of taking these homes that are aligned on the Due West area and having some kind of exit that goes back into their own community, uh, such as a bridge going over the wetland area and so forth, and using that area. Then to, to highlight the point that uh, the gentleman was just up here earlier, the, the areas that they're zoning as open spaces and greenlands and everything, they have to be zoned as open spaces and greenland. They're basically trash areas that can't be built upon right now. So we would like it to be relooked at and looked at from an R30 standpoint and no homes coming out on the due west area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Next speaker, please. My name is Ron Scheibler. I'm a resident of Brown's Farm. Uh, the concern I have is uh, the traffic on Due West. It's already listed as having 40% more uh, cars per day than uh, on uh, Mars Hill uh, on the Due West. And uh, the stipulations were no access to Carter or Mars Hill. And I'm concerned as why that was not also included on a Due West Road. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Next speaker, please. My name is Valerie Rakes, and I live on, uh, in Holland Woods. Off of, uh, I'm at Holland Woods in Due West, and I agree with everything they've said. But one of my particular concerns is that the watershed there, uh, particularly in the lower area, thank you, uh, is going to impact the West Hill subdivision, which which is kind of that little triangular subdivision that's in there. That um, it does have a water reservoir for the for the shed, but um, we live just below that on Holland Road, and that that is a concern. And we we're just wondering if that was going to be addressed before we get flooded. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rikes. Do we have another speaker? Anyone else? Okay. I keep seeing people up and down, but they're not coming forward, so I think that's it. We'll go ahead and close the uh, public testimony portion and it'll be back to this board. This is in District 1. That's handled by Mr. Gunther. We'll let him lead our discussion. Skip. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I, first, before I get into a whole discussion, I have a couple questions. I wonder if uh, Kevin Moore, if you could come back just for a second. There you are. Uh, my question for you is, who is 825 Mars Hill LLC? The, that is uh, the, the, that uh, is the, the applicant. Yeah, and, and who, what do they do? Who are they? What's their history? Um, his, his, their history is it's a uh, individual who uh, and investors who have had uh, real estate construction, real estate development experience um, across the broad spectrum, uh, heavy emphasis on landscape and architecture. Uh, so that that's who it is. It's just a it's a single purpose LLC that you see from time to time. But is it uh, in terms of who is it? It's not a name brand at this point in time. Okay, so we don't have uh, any access to, uh, you know, what they may have built somewhere so we could see what the quality of construction is and so forth. 
Uh, we just have to kind of take it on face value that they're going to be good. As far as their homes that they would build yes, or right. the development that they would well, provide? Well, both. The development and the... Uh, they're not a home builder, so they would be partnering with a home builder. Uh, okay, so they're not That often builder. depends on what you get entitled. You need to then partner with the home builder. Um, so you don't put the cart before the so horse. So the, the pictures of, uh, of the, the example homes that are in the stipulation yes. letter, uh, what do those represent then if they're not a builder? Those represent the uh, pictures of the homes that would be built uh, in this subdivision. What we, what we say is those kind of homes, uh, the homes that we've built in this subdivision would be substantially similar in their composition, their architecture, and so forth, so that you get a feel for that. Uh, very seldom do you have the exact, sometimes you do, but in, in cases like this, what's happened often, what you want to do is make sure of what you're getting and the pictures in the stipulation letter say that's what these homes, the style and architecture will be and then we further further stipulate it as to the materials that will be used and the fact that you'll have a water table that goes around all four sides uh, so that you have that element of assurance and confidence that the uh, quality of the homes will be there. Okay, then one last question on that in that regard. Um, it's not clear to me from any of the, from the stip letter or the pictures uh, whether it's one-sided masonry and so forth that would be on the uh, these homes, uh, or if it's three-sided or four-sided. What what is the plan there? Because it's only a front face uh, picture that I've seen uh, sure. for the example uh, homes that would go up. Uh, it will be a mixture. If you want to, he can. I've got those set out here. I just. In case I needed to answer those questions, he, he can just so everybody can know what we're talking about. You're going to have a, a mixture, a combination of materials uh, that will be carried around. Um, like I said, the, the way that we've addressed that in the past is to make sure that you're, uh, and you can see some of the sides there contain siding or other elements uh, of either brick or stone. Uh, there's board and batten so that you have that attractive look that's not a rubber stamp look, but one that is very attractive. Uh, in this case, what we've done is said the water table or that aspect of the home as it comes around will be carried around, which is a brick or stone water table, will be carried around to all four sides. Okay. Good. Those, <clears throat> those are my questions. Um, uh, Jane, uh, Jane Strickland, I'd like to ask you to come up just for a second to talk about the traffic issues uh, before I get into uh, the main thing that I want to talk about. Um, and, and one of the, you know, there, there's the issue of uh, traffic on Due West and also on Mars Hill that's, uh, you know, pretty significant. There are arteries. Uh, it's growing because of just the growth in that area out there. Uh, and also there's been a, a suggestion that right there at the corner of Due West and Hadaway is you're going uh, west on Due West and you want to make a right turn to go kind of northeast on uh, Hadaway. That, that's, a, that's a pretty sharp turn. I, I'm just wondering if, and, and the suggestion was made to maybe soften that that corner. So, could you talk about both those things? You know, the tra traffic in general, what the plans may be to alleviate some of the concerns the owners out there have, and then what specifically you might do with that corner right there. Um, let me start with the, the corner. Okay. Oh, hi, I'm Jane Strickland with Cop DOT. Uh, I'll start with the corner from Due West. Something was um, suggested to me that I think I'd like to make a revision to my to my uh, recommendations would be to add a right turn lane there because that is because you do have that skew of Hathaway Road and Due West and the curve of Due West that it would pull car vehicles off of Due West and allow them to make that turn a little slower because it does take a little more time because of the alignments. So okay, that was one recommendation that I thought was a good recommendation. Um, in terms of the traffic in general, I've been taking notes to bring back to the office everyone's concerns that they've mentioned. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> that's, so we could soften, we could have them during plan review soften that radius. Right, good. Does anybody have any questions of, of Jane before we move on? Okay, good. Thank you, Jane. All right, thank you. Um, when when I look at this this whole area, uh, it's it's West Cobb, and it's right smack in the center of of West Cobb. Uh, and everybody in West Cobb continues to talk about the reasons that they moved to West Cobb or they live in West Cobb. They like the look and feel, the character of, of the area. It has a rural kind of a feel. And I think when you look at this piece of property, 
Uh, this contributes in a very significant way to uh, that rural kind of feel because it is rural. It's it's a it's a it's a couple of uh, farm fields, and and that's what you see as you drive up and down Mars Hill and and due west and along Hadaway in that section right there. When when I look at the neighborhoods around, uh, you see some large R30 properties that are well more than a couple acres. Uh, for with individual homes, and then you see a mixture of R30 and R20, and I, I and I agree RA5 down in that uh, southeast corner of this uh, this area, uh, and then the old PRD. So you see a fair amount of density um, by allowing, and this is zoned R30, and the future land use map is very low density residential, which allows for zero to two units per acre. So R30 is typically 1.1 units per acre, and R20 is typically 1.75 units per acre when it's, everything's all said and done with. So both of those designations fit within the very uh, VLDR, very uh, low density residential future land use category. But, and there's a big but here, changing this, this is this is one of the last major pieces of uh, property out here that's undeveloped of, of any significant size. Changing this to R20, which one could argue is consistent with a lot of the neighborhoods around there, uh, still changing that to R20 is going to significantly impact the traffic, the infrastructure, the look and feel. It's going to erode away the character in a significant way, I believe, of the the rural feel that this area has. I think OSC, probably the OSC overlay, uh, probably makes sense uh, because there is some property in here that uh, parts, parts of this parcel that you know could be saved and would allow for um, you know, some nice walking trails and so forth. But the R20 part of this bothers me a lot. I'm leaning in the direction. I mean, there, there are just there are lots of issues with stormwater management and and, and lots of uh, detail kind of issues uh, that are still sort of floating around. But I I think that I'm leaning in the direction of of saying that I'd like to see this become an R30 OSC subdivision that would help maintain. It would allow the owners to develop this the way it's zoned R30, but it would help to maintain the look and feel and uh, character of, of this area. Um, I'm concerned about setbacks and buffers. When you look at the, um, the northwest corner of uh, this property, um, there are two R30 uh, uh, parcels adjacent to it, and the back lot ratio there is in the vicinity of 5 to 1 along one side. Uh, that's way too high. Five, five lots adjacent to one lot. Um, there, the setbacks, uh, I, I believe, should be 40 feet along an R30 subdivision. I think that's what the code says, and I don't believe that the back setbacks are set that way. Um, I think a, you know, a buffer that's around the rest of the property ought to be extended along those two parcels to the northwest. But those are details. Uh, that need to be addressed in a redesign, but I, I'm leaning in the direction of saying I believe that we need to redesign this uh, as an R30 OSC. Uh, I would welcome any discussion from from the board, uh, you know, from the uh, the commission uh, on that subject. But uh, I just think the density is uh, is just too high, and it's going to negatively impact the character of this area that we're trying to preserve. Any comments? Uh, when we had our work session a few days ago, one of the first things that, that was raised is why can't this be an R30 OSC? Uh, I thought it could, and I, so I tend to agree with you. And I, if you make a motion like that, I would support it. Okay. Anyone else? Go on. I'll add that as well. Just, you know, I used to live in this general area, and I agree with the look and feel. I also think in that area we've seen so much traffic and, and load on the infrastructure that, you know, bringing a much higher density than what it's already approved for would just create uh, problems, you know, on the whole infrastructure. So uh, let me ask another question: Does this does the current plan comply with the OSC requirements? 
Uh, <clears throat> I think Phil can answer that, but uh, the latest plan, I believe, yeah, go yeah, ahead, come, Phil, why don't you answer that question, because there's a little bit of concern, question about whether that really is yeah, the case. Yeah, the last report I saw from you said it does not. Is that still the case? Philip Westbrook, Community Development. Um, they submitted a revised plan Friday, and or Thursday, I think okay. July 30th, and that one had the percentage open space what they needed. It, okay. okay. So it's, it's there are some say, smaller technicalities that need to be addressed from the plan on July, that's stamp dated July 30th. But as far as their percentage of open space, they did meet that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. One other. Go ahead. I think sometimes that uh, we get hung up on the density in this particular case because the property is is like a farm. I think it would be a better presentation, sell quicker by an R30 OSC because it'll be laid out um, with the larger lots. Also. Um, just for some information, Brown's Farm is zoned R20, so you know you, one could say that this ought to be R20, but because of the nature of the and so many roads surrounding it, I think it would be better served as a um, R30 OSC, and I think that you could save much more uh, green space. And I think they need to get with Phil and see what an OSC R30 would look like, but I think it would look really well on this track. Skip, are you thinking in terms of, of holding this? Yes. And, and asking for a plan yeah, to come I'm, back? I'm thinking in terms of uh, holding this for a month, um, allowing the applicant to go back and uh, design an R30 OSC subdivision uh, on this property. Uh, and one additional point that I failed to make before, but I made it in one of the previous uh, cases, an OSC subdivision, right in the, in the, in the ordinance, it says that the larger lots, since you're talking about having a similar number of lots on a, on a piece of property that the underlying zoning would allow, o OSC puts open space aside, so that implies that the lot size in an OSC development is going to have to be smaller on average. So you're going to have smaller lots. In this case, uh, R30 would require 30,000 square foot lots. You would have something significantly less than that for some of the lots. The OSC ordinance says take those smaller lots and do everything you can to move them into the interior and keep the larger lots on the exterior so that as you drive by a subdivision like this, uh, you're going to see something that's similar to what's around it uh, with the interior being where you have the smaller lots. This, the current design has an awful lot of lots that are small that are right on the edges and so that's something that would need to be rectified too. So anyway, having said that, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, go ahead, Skip. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we hold application C-66 until our next hearing uh, to allow the applicant to go back and to incorporate all of the comments that have been written in the staff analysis and have been uh, discussed today uh, into a new design. Um, that's, okay. my, that's my motion. We have a motion and a second by Ms. Williams. Any further discussion or comments? Not hearing or seeing any, call for the vote. So that's what we're going to do then. We'll hold this and hear it again in 30 days and hopefully see a revised plan that uh, works a little better. Thank you, folks. John, what's next, please? <laughs>